Hello again, Algebronies. It's Bosch, and I'm right back with some examples of finding those zeros algebraically. Now, it's going to get a lot harder than this, but we've just started the topic. So we're going to start out with the low-level things. We're moving into finding solutions and zeros of quadratic and polynomial functions very soon. Uh, but we'll start off with these uh, relatively simple ones. So finding zeros, we talked about in the last video, zeros have other names. They're also called solutions or x-intercepts or roots. So if you see any of those vocabulary terms and you're asked to find one of those things, it's all the same thing. You're finding the x value where the function value is zero. On a graph, that's where the, the, the picture of the graph crosses the x-axis algebraically it's when the function's output value is equal to zero. So we're going to use that fact to set these up to solve them and find out the zeros or solutions or x-intercepts or roots, whatever you want to call them. So we have f of x is equal to negative 2x plus 6. This is a linear function and we want to figure out where this crosses the x-axis. If you're pretty good with linear functions you could probably figure it out just by looking at it and working some stuff out in your head but maybe you're not. So here are the steps on how you would solve this uh, exercise. So f of x represents the function's output. So since the root or the zero of the equation or the function is where the function's output is zero, we are going to replace f of x with zero and then solve for x. This will effectively find the x value when the y value the function output is zero when it's crossing the x-axis. So let's go ahead and do that. I have f of x again. I'm not going to read it again. Instead of f of x, I'm going to substitute in zero. And this is equal to negative 2x plus 6, the function rule. Now I'm going to solve for x. When you're solving for a variable, we're using two different properties. The inverse property for either addition or multiplication and the property of equality for either addition or multiplication. So the inverse property effectively gets rid of all the stuff that's happening to x and then the property of equality is going to be what balances the equation. So we want to start by working on the side that has our variable which is the right side in this case and we're going to first get rid of any term that doesn't have the variable in it. 6. It's a plus 6. The inverse property would have us add a negative 6 to make that go away. I'm going to write minus 6 because adding a negative 6 and subtracting 6 is the same thing. So I'm going to subtract 6 from the right. I'm going to do the same thing from the left and that's called the addition property of equality. As long as we add or subtract or multiply or divide both sides by the same amount, it keeps the equation balanced and that's important. That's key. It must be balanced. So minus 6 on the left also. And then just evaluate, work it out, and write down your next step. 0 minus 6 is negative 6. On the right, we have negative 2x. The plus 6 and the min minus 6 cancel out. And we did that on purpose because we want to isolate or get the variable by itself. The next thing, we want to undo this multiplication of negative 2. We have negative 2 times x. To undo multiplication, you would multiply by the reciprocal which is the same thing as dividing by that number. So you could do it any way you want to say it. Either multiply both sides by the reciprocal of negative 2 or divide both sides by negative 2. Both of those things mean the same and do the same. Because you're used to it this way, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. And this will isolate x and let's just work it out. Negative 2 over negative 2 is 1 effectively getting x all by itself. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. So the zero of this function, f of x is equal to negative 2x plus 6, is x equals 3. Nice work. I'm going to do the next one a little bit faster. And I see a fraction in there. So if you're a little iffy on working out fraction equations uh, or number sense operations, keep the calculator handy, please. <laughs> Don't make little mistakes with number sense. So the way we handle this, since a zero is where the function's output is zero, I'm going to replace f of x with zero. So we have zero is equal to negative 2 fifths x plus 4. 
and we're going to use the inverse properties and the properties of equality to get x all by itself. We'll start by adding a negative 4 to both sides, giving us negative 4 on the left is equal to negative 2 fifths x on the right. Now, to undo multiplication, you multiply by the reciprocal. This works a lot better with fractions if you actually just multiply by the reciprocal instead of thinking about dividing both sides by the same thing that's multiplying x. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 5 over 2. That's the reciprocal of negative 2 fifths. By doing this, we will cancel that out. That's the inverse property of multiplication. The negative 2 fifths and the negative 5 halves cancel out on the right hand side and we have just x. On the left, negative 5 halves times 4, let me work this out really uh, quickly, sorry, this is 5 times 2, which is 10. 5 times 4 is 20, 20 over 2 is 10, the negatives cancel each other out. So I'm to make sure I got the right answer there. So x is equal to 10 when f of x is equal to 0. So the 0 for this function is located at x is equal to 10. Great! <laughs> I hope you found this helpful. I hope you're doing your homework and studying and practicing uh, and working hard and being good to the people around you. Have a good one. I'll see you tomorrow.